Thanks, Sarah. Um, I feel a bit humbled this afternoon. Uh, we've got Polly here from Cambridge, uh, the Molson crowd, and also Abigail Venny, ever food festivals. I, I was a virgin food festival organiser about a year ago, um, and it's been a lot of learning. So I thought I'd just sort of rattle you through. I've got a lot of slides, sorry, but I'll try and be very quick. That's quite visual. And, uh, and, and that's, it, it's sort of at the, at the end of the day, that graveyard shift, isn't it? Everyone's sort of <laughs> feeling a bit. So rattle through. Um, Let's talk about the role of urban food festivals. Uh, why a food festival in Newport, our approach, so what happened uh, and where we are now. Um, food festivals in Wales tend to be more rural, tend to have a market town setting, tend to have that connection with the sort of rurality and the actual landscape around it. Uh, apart from Swansea, Cardiff, Newport was looking for a new food festival of some sort. Newport also has that spatial connection in terms of South East Wales, Monmouthshire, the Marches area. Uh, Newport is a port, or was a port, still is a port. So there's got something there about role and function about what Newport's about. Also, Newport Council, Newport Unlimited, were looking at a regeneration master plan. And as Andy said this morning, you know, regeneration isn't just about bricks and mortar, it's about people, about place, about product. And there could have been a risk in Newport about just putting in lots of sort of shiny glass buildings and not looking at the actual product underneath it. Um, and importantly, Newport. Some people at times often laugh at me when I say about Newport Food Festival. It's a bit of a cheeky sort of, isn't it, me? Um, but perceptions of Newport, um, at times it gets a bad deal. Um, uh, I see people laughing at me now in the front there. Um, part of my job, um, and Andy spoke last year, about what he was doing, and Andy's role in the past has been this animateur, provocateur, raconteur, these sorts of er words, yeah. Um, and a part of our job is, is about changing perceptions. Uh, our approach to what we did was about mapping assets in terms of Newport sense of place, looking at partnerships, and the key word today, I sense, has been about engagement with people at all sorts of levels. Uh, quickly, mapping assets, um, I took all from Google and from food directories and takeaway, came up big. Takeaway in Newport, when I started looking at the segmentation, takeaway was really quite, uh, quite strong, yeah. Um, then when I started to punch down to what was on the ground in terms of actual cuisine, so here we're talking more about hospitality, okay. Uh, it's quite rich, it's quite eclectic, um, it's quite gritty, it's quite real. Um, and it's got, it's got some iconic brands locally. If you are from Newport or South East Wales, there's some names there uh, that, w that people will actually know of. Um, but I think the conversation that Chris started, Andy started to answer about supermarkets, things are quite fragmented and lack cohesion, and they aren't coherent enough. So these things are out there, but they're actually quite hidden. Um, when we asked people at the food festival last year, as they went to the door, having had a good day, we asked them about their perception of Newport before the event, and it was these sorts of words. It was about limited, poor, uh, yum is one word, a small word there says yum. <laughs> um, but importantly as well, I went on to, to the True Taste website about a year and a half ago, Winford let you know, <laughs> and it may have changed, and these certain, in terms of food businesses, these came up. I wouldn't say they're actually you know, sort of primary food producers, such as more about being processed, yeah? But you've got things there around butchery, around bakery, around eggs, uh, you've got desserts, you've got crisps, sorry, <laughs> there. But there is, a, you know, there is a culture of food in Newport in terms of it being made, it being sold. Uh, we quickly did a bit of work looking at what's in Newport, a lot of GIS or techno type stuff, and just generally got a feeling for what's there. And we got down to the center of Newport, um, and you know, you know, all this tends to work um, in terms of where the HSC centre is. Um, going on to the centre of Newport itself, for those of you that don't know it, um, it's been through a rough time. The word recession, um, the local data company uh, has got a 50% vacancy rate nationally. Um, so it's quite high. Uh, Cardiff's boomed, Bristol as well, and Newport has been bypassed a bit. Um, we started looking at assets in terms of Newport. Um, it's got a fine market hall. Uh, it's on two uh, sort of levels. And it's got an amazing theatre uh, on the banks of, of uh, the Esk. 
So the Usk flows through Monmouthshire and comes out in Newport. There's something there about that spatial sort of thing, about rivers and about coming through a place. Um, this is an old slide, so I'm moving along. Um, that's well away about time here. So when we started looking at a food festival for Newport, um, we started looking at assets. Uh, the, the stars, going backwards, sorry, up here. You hear me from the back. Uh, this is the market hall. Here's the theatre, and there's the ESC. And we started looking about how do we connect assets, how do we get movement, how do we get animation. And then I started thinking about, uh, with our food festival sort of group, about partnering. Um, it's quite amazing that, um, in terms of, of the council, what came out really was about young people, about young people, about schools, around adult learning. Um, I wouldn't say what I call the hardware, the actual hard physical regeneration, those sorts of people actually came forward. It was more about people who engage um, with young people and about looking at the future of Newport. Um, to, to the right-hand side, Newport Limited, uh, which is funded through Welsh Government, uh, they had some key partners there, which I sort of tended to use. Um, the University of Wales Newport has been a key partner in terms of what I'm, 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 I'm going to go through now with you. Colleague Gwent as well, uh, and the council, and the wider business sector. So, in terms of our formula for year one, it was about developing our own identity, about not parachuting in something from elsewhere, about it being really bottom up, trying to talk about what's on offer in Newport, using the centre of Newport, starting small, and about engagement. Um, key things we started to look at um, were a number of things which we're talking today uh, about food festivals not just being like a one-day event. I think there's been that debate today, I feel. They aren't just, you know, they're just, a, the, it's a road show doesn't come and go. And it's about it being a part of that layer across that community. So we developed a thing called Teen Chef and Mini Chef. Um, it's probably been done elsewhere, okay. Uh, but we're proud of it in Newport. Um, and that was about working with youth services. Uh, we had 150 young people took part in Teen Chef. Uh, we had about 12 heats. I was a member on a dark, dank, sort of cold night in this wherry, and um, there was somebody there who looked at this sort of recipe, and it was, a, it, it was a ham carbonara or something, yeah? And she didn't know how to crack the egg. You know, the eggs were always put in the fridge, yeah? And she never knew. She looked at this egg, and, and I said, where do I start, yeah? And that, for me, was really quite powerful about just trying to get people. I think today it's been about getting back to the basics. Um, so, for me, Teen Chef was really about getting people in all neighbourhoods of Newport, from Pearl to High Cross to Lanwoon, all involved in that process. Um, and young people being proud of it. You can see on their faces here, they're actually really proud of what they've got on their plate. Um, Howell Jones, who's from Lucknow Park, head chef, uh, winner of the Great British Many Welsh uh, final a few years ago, from the gear in Newport. Howell became our mentor ambassador. And how you know, he's played a key role in this. Um, we also did a thing called Mini Chef, uh, all that engaging with sort of primary schools. Again, similar format, um, but great fun. And all that was sort of leading to the big cook off final in Newport, so this big crescendo. Um, how on show there with the people, uh, judging, tasting, giving feedback, you know, being honest, yeah? Um, and, and the winning team was three Ryans and, and a chap called Ben. Um, and as Sarah knows, uh, we, we had the March launch of our food festival, and Ryan got up on stage, Sarah, didn't he? And we couldn't stop him talking, could we? He wants to be David Cameron, I think, or whoever. But he stood there, and we just couldn't stop him talking. Uh, he, he was amazing. And that, for, for me, isn't just about cooking, it's about confidence, it's about team, about life skills. Um, and then Mini Chef, again, uh, we had them. Uh, they both won, to let you know. Um, we had Stephen Terry from Hardwick judging, uh, with Simon Wright from Epollin, and it was a, a great day. And I think for me, to, it's all about emotions. See, what's come from today has all been about emotional stuff, about that sense of feeling good, and about well-being, and about celebration. Um, so just some key figures for you, because no time is running away. Uh, we had lots of people take part, um, and um, yeah. Teen Chef and Mini Chef was really good. Uh, the Festival Supper, um, this is more about changing perceptions of a place. Um, 
Newport's had some bad press. There was a program called Bouncers that was shown about six months ago about Newport nightlife, unfortunately. Um, and a part of our, of our job is just trying to sort of change perceptions around Newport isn't just about vertical drinking. Um, it is probably still, though, about having a good bag of chips end of the night, though. Yeah, it's still about real stuff, yeah? Um, so we did a supper. Um, and I couldn't believe it, but we had to turn that um, into that, uh, which was a hard uh, a sort of task. Uh, but we did it. Um, and we got 170 diners in the market hall having a conversation about Newport and food, which never happens before. Always people were going out to individual restaurants, but actually getting them together in one room, having that conversation, to, to me is, is sort of really strong and it's really confident. Um, one thing I thought about, the supper was on a Friday night and I found it really hard to get some serving staff for it. Everyone's busy, aren't they? So I, I went to Job Centre Plus and said, look, I've got an idea here. Could we try and get some people who are, are actually coming up in work and take them through pre-employment training? So we actually got 25 people through silver service training in about four weeks. It was a boot camp. And um, again, like another emotion for me, um, I met them in the Sherman Theatre in Newport, and they all came in all, all shapes and sizes, and everyone often with their heads down, you know, very, they lacked no confidence, yeah? And um, for me, again, we held the workshops in, in the Waterloo Inn and restaurant down in Newport, and got them to sort of learn about, you know, silver service and everything else, um, a, a bit of role playing, and, and this photograph here, you know, uh, they're all smiling, they're all proud, yeah. Um, and on the night, um, it was great. Um, you know, they served the food, they loved it. Um, a, re a real team atmosphere, uh, and they they uh, took a bow. So on that side of things, um, there were tense. Uh, so, 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 well, in, in terms of all the end outputs, 10 staff were trained. Um, three staff got jobs on, on the back of that. So, so on, on the next day, three of them actually went into permanent employment, yeah? In sort of catering hospitality. Um, I've just realised, by the way, I've got the wrong presentation. So I'm doing quite well now, can't I? It's all right. <laughs> you wouldn't know, would you? <laughs> um, so, so 170 diners, a real spotlight on Newport, and it was meant to be inclusive. We priced it, I feel, at the right value. It was a three-course meal with sparkling perry, all locally sourced, uh, and it was a good mix of people. Um, we then did something, and I know with Cowbridge, sorry, that we were on the same weekend as Polly Whitmer last year. We've moved it, but we still clash with Brecken and Neef to let you know anyway. Um, but we just thought about, about radio adverts promotion we could have gone to Capital FM and paid them £2,000 for the advert, but the University of Wales Newport have a big media school, so we actually went to them, um, went to the head lecturer there, and uh, it was great. We actually we got about six students, and we did the, the whole advert together. I actually learned from them. I went into studio, um, and uh, they're the folks. Um, and it was, uh, I think we had about, I forget now, uh, 25 seconds of, on air, um, and now I'm going to just play it to you if this works. Is that okay? Um. What are you doing this Saturday? Well, from 9 till 5, Newport Food Festival is cooking up a feast. Celebrity chef demonstrations, stalls stuffed full of local produce, the final stage of the mini chef and teen chef competitions, street theatre, and family fun. This True Taste Festival can be found just off the M4 in Newport City Centre in the Indoor Market and the Riverfront Theatre. Newport Food Festival. It's food and more. So a slight Newport twang there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. We did have a big debate, do we use the strong pill type twang or do we go more towards... But it was, for me, I learned a lot from them. It was mutual learning. Um, we saved some money, to be honest with you as well. Um, it, it was value for money, and it was about the personality of the place, yeah. Um, the festival, just very, very quickly, um, was good for our first year. Uh, for me, it was about small steps. Um, the guy here, Tony Smith, in the centre, Tony's our sponsor this year for the Food Fest. Um, uh, and um, he makes his sauce in Horeb, currently in West Wales, at, at the food centre. Um, and he's looking at bringing jobs back to Newport. Uh, the Backyard Company. 
So um, he sold all his chicken, I think, by two o'clock, yeah? Uh, but again, it's about personality, it's about inclusion, uh, it's about multicultural. Uh, we had a giant lobster, to let you know. Um, uh, and we had, you know, we, we had the chef dems, but I think today it's, it's more about that, it's more about uh, that wider reach and a wider family of people we, we actually need to engage with uh, through food, uh, with cookery workshops. The market hall was, was, was buzzing uh, with local chefs, uh, we had known chefs, we had James Summerin, we had Howell, Stephen Terry, Norman's there. Um, he's on again this year. And importantly as well was about not just keeping it away from the market stalls. Uh, we've got Stephen Terry here who did a very uh, sort of off-piste type chef dem, yeah? Where he just grabbed the veg off the stalls, grabbed the cards. It was great and Needham's love it. You know, we've really started to really connect now with them. Uh, and this year we're doing how to cook the perfect steak as well, because everyone can ruin a steak, can't they? And that's on Elston's. Um, so, some, so, so some key outputs there for you, um, and, just, and, and just some key quotes uh, that came through from people. Um, it was about awareness, about Newport. Does Newport actually have this? It was that sort of real, that's a wake-up call. Um, about it being a brilliant day, like the city, want to come back for more. So it's about, about destination, about that broader sort of year. Um, yeah, and there's the market, in the market, it was, it was like a beehive, the hum of people. A Newport market letting you know it has gone through a rough time, yeah, and it, it's quite important, the role of food festivals and all that. Um, so going forward, before I put the wrong slide, just give me a second. Um, you may just want to catch your breath as I'm doing this. Um, sorry, just give me one second. Here we are. So going forward where we are, and I, will, and, and I will talk at the end about the topic of our conference. Um, yeah, we are developing an informal food network. It's quite hard in an urban place to do that. And I think today we've spoken about, that co about connection with place. It's probably easier if you're on a coast or in farmland or in a market town. It's very hard in an urban setting to actually get people to realise that foods apart, you know, in Newport being a port. Um, I think Captain Morgan brought his rum to Newport many, many years ago. There's a rich story there that you've got to really try and sort of peel away. Um, this year, uh, we, we extended our partnership with the university, just about to show you hopefully a short film from them. Teen Chef, I've got to say it, is now running itself. Uh, the first year I was nurturing it and helping. The whole of youth services now uh, are firmly behind it and it's going really well. Um, they're looking at community growing as well and other activities. And we are building our reputation. Uh, that sort of sly smile of someone saying, Newport Food Festival, what is that? It's starting to go now a bit. People are starting to be a bit more serious. Um, we've got some strong sponsors. Um, we've got some great brands coming through. This is Tiny Rebel Brewery. Two lads called Brad and Gaz. Um, Really strong urban microbrewery. Feels a bit West Coast, grungy Seattle to me a bit. And we're just trying to like get that feeling uh, for the place. Uh, some of you may know Elm Tree, who do like award-winning pies. Uh, just based just on the Seven Estuary. You know, wouldn't believe it. And uh, so Collette has won major awards across the UK for her pies, yeah? So a lot of it is about the story behind it. Um, this year we got some Bangra, which I'm really looking forward to it. Um, a, bit, a bit of dole drumming. Uh, I think for us, Newport is a really multicultural place. Polish, Yemenese, Bangladeshi. We did have, have a Russian restaurant there once, if it's gone. Um, but quite a, quite a rich you know, sort of place in terms of people. Uh, again, we've got some chefs this year coming, as you can see. Anna and George coming from Cardiff. Um, and if this works, what we've done over the last few months, working again uh, with a number of students on the media course at, at UWN, is do a quick film, uh, a quick film about Newport and food. And this should be our one minute promo that has gone live this afternoon, so I'm just going to press this. And, uh... Last year, the food festival in Newport, I thought was fantastic. Customers can learn and, and see different things, rather than go into the same supermarkets all the time, and actually come into a different area and see how things are sold in different ways. And that in itself is, is, is a massive plus. So that gave us a really great platform to, to sort of promote our products, um, and it was a wonderful day. We did a dinner 
for 170 people. It was very successful. It was great because it was nice to see that buzz, you know, had, have that original that it used to be like. It was lots of people in here, real nice buzz about the place. There was chef's demonstrations on the Saturday in, in the marketplace and everybody I spoke to said it was absolutely fantastic and it was what Newport needed. So here we are, we're going to do it again and hopefully this year it'll be even better. <laughs> um, I think for me, it's not just the film, it's people coming together and actually having the confidence to say we're proud of our place, so it's not just the actual thing you see there, it's, it's more about the process. Um, and finally, because I know my time is not there, I know this has got to speak and you've got some more than me probably. Um, I think for us here, the challenge is about ownership, about getting involved more, and about it being about the whole community. Um, I mentioned to you about word of mouth, about it being more multicultural. Uh, I did have a slide, but it's not on there. Um, about towns and about recession, um, Chris Wade and Nick and I are doing some work for Welsh Government on town centre regeneration, and I, I think there's something there about event-based regeneration actually it's quite important. It shouldn't just be about bricks and mortar. Events actually bring out people. It's about animation. And we know with our current high streets that are suffering, there's a key role here about food festivals and what they do. Um, the other points that are on there, uh, it's more about sense of belonging, around cohesion, around people feeling a bit neighbourly, you know, people actually coming together. And that's really powerful. Like in, in a place like Newport, that's uh, in terms of, of sort of landworm going and steel going, and losing those staple industries. It's about getting people back together again, uh, which, which to me is you know, really important, uh, and, and we shouldn't lose that focus. Um, so that's quite a, quite a fast, rapid fire through. Um, just one thing, the Food Festival uh, is on October the 6th. I think Cow Cowbridge is on the 20th? 27th, 27th sorry, sorry, what's that? 27th and 28th, sorry. Because um, last year we did clash, unfortunately. But, um, but we've moved. But uh, we're all one big team, aren't we? Uh, of course we are. Well, thank you. Any questions quickly? Or, uh, so it's the, the no? 6th, 6th of October in Newport. The 6th of October in the centre of Newport. Be there. <laughs>